How worrisome are these preliminary reports that infections are picking up again in Europe and here in Manhattan, as we just heard? Is there some kind of connection to cities loosening their mask and vaccine requirements, do you think? Yeah, hi, Scarlett. So, uh, obviously, this is a respiratory virus. It is transferred from me to you through air droplets and aerosols. So, you take the masks off and you go on subways. There is a risk, especially with Omicron, where there is a much higher percentage of cases that are asymptomatic or very mildly symptomatic, so you don't think you've got it. Um, and then you'll find that people are uh, transmitting it. So, as soon as those masks have gone, it's inevitable that the cases would rise um, unless we're dealing with a situation where absolutely everybody is immunized mm. and therefore not going to catch the virus, which is, I think, never. Yeah, we've seen that that's not going to happen. So, Madison, um, I'm glad Sam mentioned Omicron because, of course, the worst of it was back in, I feel like, December and January. But now you've got this substrain, this subvariant of Omicron. What can you tell us about it? What do we know about it and its characteristics? Yeah, so, so far what we know is that BA2 is, you know, it, it is the same in um, severity as Omicron, so as the original strain. So hospitalizations um, seem to, you know, be on par with, with Omicron. It seems to be more mild mm -hmm. than the original strain that we saw, you know, back in two years ago now, um, and definitely more so than Delta. And, but what we do know is that it seems to be more transmissible than the original strain. So it spreads a little bit easier. And we're not really sure why yet. We don't know if that's due to, um, you know, it, something with just its transmissibility or immunity. And that's something people are trying to figure out right now. Something else that we don't know is why there are some people who have never had COVID or they say they've never had COVID, estimated to be more than half of the American population. That strikes me as a really, really big percentage of the U.S. population. Right. Yeah. And I, I was surprised to hear that, too, just because I feel like we hear of so many COVID cases. We all know someone that, that has had it. I've had it twice. Um, but compared to the Spanish flu, the Spanish flu actually only infected 25% of the population, hmm. um, which is interesting. But there were a huge number of deaths. Uh, so we know that some people aren't, either aren't getting COVID at all or they're not symptomatic. And it's very hard to tell, you know, which category people fall into. But uh, scientists in the UK are looking into some people who seem to have never gotten COVID because their bodies are able to get rid of the virus before they can test positive for it. So, Sam, let's come to you because there's obviously not a lot of scholarship on this yet. We're only just now starting to study it. How are you thinking about this? How are you thinking about the value that these kinds of people, if they are super immune, could provide to scientists? Yeah, so if these are actually, a bi if there is actually a biological mechanism behind it that can be manipulated, for instance, they have a very strong specific type of antibody that they produce, or they have very strong so-called resident memory uh, uh, immune in their immunity in their nasal passages that reacts very quickly to interfere, or even adaptive innate. You know, there's so many different aspects to the mm. immune system. If we understand the detail, and this is actually a reality as opposed to um, something odd about the way that people are surveying folks, then, of course, you have that uh, possibility to, to understand it better and maybe use it to our advantage. Maybe use it to our advantage. Madison, are there scientists now devoted to studying this? I mean, I feel like you need a lot of data in order to start studying this. And the data is kind of flawed because we actually don't really know how many people have tested positive because so many people test at home using their home rapid tests. Right. That's definitely a consideration. And also it's you know, it's harder and harder to gauge immunity when there is immunity because of things like vaccines. Now there's prior infections. Some people have gotten one shot while some others have, you know, had three, maybe four now. And so this the study that we have been looking at and that, um, you know, I was writing about yesterday uh, is was done prior to vaccines. So they were able to look at whether people had natural immunity to the virus, which is something that's a little bit harder to find now. Um, and so, you know, back then those people looked to have some type of natural immunity due to uh, T-cells that were able to recognize past seasonal coronavirus mm -hmm, infections. 
Um, but that's going to be harder and harder to study going forward. Yeah, and you're also going to get a lot of regular flu cases mixed up in everything as well because it's, it's getting to the point where flu symptoms are similar to COVID symptoms and people test constantly and aren't sure what they have. Um, Sam, I want to take a step back here for a moment because considering cases are going up and restrictions are going away, it seems like the world is intent on kind of learning how to live with COVID. How close are we to, to being in an endemic world where COVID's endemic and not a pandemic anymore? Or is that something that we cannot do because we'll always have these seasonal peaks and valleys? Well, to be honest with you, I think if you look at somebody, uh, a, a region such as the UK, there is currently a Royal Society of Medicine conversation going on, event going on that's talking about the public health aspect. And, and, you know, one of the presenters there said that this is today a community disease, especially with the much lower rate of hospitalizations with Omicron, uh, much of which is to do with our vaccination status. So if it's already a community disease, and you, I wager that there are very few people who are listening who, would, who don't know somebody right now infected with COVID. Yeah. So it's probably already endemic, but I don't really see what the value of this definition is. Suppose it's endemic. It doesn't really make any difference because we have no idea what's going to happen next with the next variant. Is it a evolution of the BA2 or BA1, Omicron subvariants, or is it somewhere Delta hasn't gone away? There's somebody somewhere still uh, long term infected with Delta, maybe yet another variant that comes along. So a lot of that is, is still not possible. And therefore, I think it doesn't really serve us much to talk about endemic. What we need mm -hmm. is people to have high immunity. If that's yeah. what endemic means, yes, I'd love people to have immunity to this virus.